I got this email from Uber and oh my goodness, this is just the worst thing that I've ever seen. I cannot believe my eyes as I am reading this email. Let me just read the email to you. It says, take trips to continue seeing upfront addresses on Uber Eats. Why should you hide the address from me? That's insane. When couriers repeatedly reject trip requests, everything slows down. Well, sure, yeah, I guess that's true. If you're going to offer me $2 or $3 to take an offer, like, yeah, of course I'm going to reject that. And I could see how that customer might get their food later than they would have expected. Restaurants wait longer for food to be picked up. Sure, if it's a 2 or $3 offer, then yeah, like, yeah, it's just going to sit there. Customers wait longer for their orders to be delivered. Yes, of course. And other couriers often have to travel farther for each trip. The last part is true. Yes, if people are accepting like $3 offers for like nine miles, like yes, those couriers are going to have to travel a further distance to complete that offer. That's very true. But if it's a $3 order, then nobody should accept it. And the order will just never be picked up and it's fine. You know, that's really sad for the restaurant because they had to make all that food and it just goes to waste. But that's just the reality. If customers aren't going to tip, then why would anybody want to pick up that order? Let's continue. Couriers who accept most of the requests they receive help improve the Uber Eats experience for everyone on the platform. It improves everyone's experience on the platform except for the driver. The driver is the one that gets paid very poorly, but at least the restaurant's happy and the customer's happy. But the driver is left with a $2 order. So pickup and drop off addresses will now be shown up front only to those who accept at least three out of every 10 trip requests. What? That's a 30% acceptance rate at minimum, to continue seeing the drop-off addresses. What? Okay, let me just say, my acceptance rate when I am working DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub, my acceptance rate is under 10% on all of the apps. 30%? How am I supposed to get my acceptance rate up to 30%? In some markets, this is actually beneficial to keep it at 30%. And uh, I guess I wouldn't have a problem there, but in my large market, like there are so many offers that I can kind of just cherry pick my way through the whole system and make sure that I'm only accepting the best offers. And so, yeah, I am below 10%. So you expect me to be 30%? That's crazy. That would lower my earnings so much. And then it says, don't worry, you'll still be able to see the full amount you'll earn even if you've lost access to upfront addresses. You can see where the restaurant is and then where the drop-off address is. Can't see the full address, obviously, but like the cross streets that it's going to in the city. And then when you don't have the upfront addresses, it, what does it show? It just shows nothing. It doesn't show the restaurant and it doesn't show where you're dropping it off. First of all, what, like this is such a safety hazard. You cannot just hide that from us. Like some of us, I mean, I, I think I'm fortunate enough to where I don't deliver in like a dangerous city. Um, but that's also because I choose to deliver in a safe area. And so like if I'm going like four or five miles from my hotspot, anything in that area, I know that it's not going to be a dangerous area. But for a lot of people, a lot of you that is crazy. Sometimes there are neighborhoods you just never want to go to in your city. And I totally understand that. And if you go three miles in one direction, it's like this really rich neighborhood. But if you go three miles in the other direction, well, you're going to have to fear for your life. How is that even realistic for Uber to say, oh, don't worry. Like, it's just three miles. Like, who cares where it's going? Because you're just trying to help the customer experience. No, that's not how that works, Uber. I'm sorry, you can't just say that. Now, I did get this email three days ago, and so I've actually had time 
to take a few of these offers that are hidden addresses most of the time what that ends up meaning for me is that I'm accepting like a lot of $6 offers or even like $5 offers that I would never take just because I'm trying to get my acceptance rate up to 30%. Uh, but I often find that I am having an acceptance rate of like zero out of the last 10 orders or like one out of the last 10 orders and I can just never see where I'm going. So I guess this has worked out for Uber's favor because I want to see those addresses right now. Like I can't live without turning on Uber Eats and like seeing what kind of offers are out there. And so I'm playing right into their hand, which is actually like kind of annoying to me because, you know, I'm doing exactly what they want me to do is keep my acceptance rate up. But like, I can't do anything about it. I need it. And that is the terrible part. Let's go through the rest of this email and see what it says, how it works. The number of trips you've accepted goes up each time you accept a request and it goes down each time you decline or accept and then cancel a request. They're going to track the first 10 deliveries that you've been offered and then out of that they'll come up with how many orders you've accepted. So let's just say you accepted three of the last 10 orders. That means that you'll have a little thing on your screen that says like you've accepted three out of 10, you will be shown upfront addresses. But what happens when you decline one? Well, it says uh, upfront addresses, you're going to lose them if you don't accept this one. And of course, it's going to be like a $2, like 10 mile offer. And so you're like, I can't take that. So you click the X and now, boom, you cannot see where the restaurant is or where the house is. This also means that if you have to wait at a restaurant, let's say 25 minutes. That's a scenario that happened to me maybe two weeks ago. I walk in there and they're like, the order's not gonna be ready for 25 to 30 minutes. So of course I'm going to cancel that and then try to get another one. Well, then that also counts as you rejecting it. And so if you got up back to three out of 10 and you cancel this one, well, now, now you can't see the addresses anymore. The next part of this email is actually very important. And this is what I want to talk to you about right now. It says, your feedback matters. Not all couriers in your city will be receiving this message or seeing these changes because we're still testing them. That's why your opinion is so important. Please help us by sharing your feedback here. And it shows you a link that you can go to a Google form and you can fill out the feedback. But first I wanna talk about how it says that not everyone in your city is seeing this message or seeing the changes that they're trying to test out. I just have a feeling that they went through and they're like, well, everyone with a terrible acceptance rate, let's try to incentivize them to pick it up a little bit. But if this is happening to you, please let me know in the comments if you have a high acceptance rate and you still got this message. It's also nice to know that this isn't a change for everybody right now. I'm glad that I got it so I could test this out and I could have a video for you guys. But if you're not seeing this, like that is very good news for you. And hopefully this means that this change is not permanent. It also says, please help us by sharing your feedback here. And so, uh, yeah, I am going to share my feedback, which is why I'm making this video. I am sharing my feedback and I am informing all of you who are drivers on Uber that this could happen to you. But also, I would like to share my feedback in this Google form that it opens up. When I click this from my email, it logged me in automatically to my Gmail account. It says, please fill out your name, email, and your feedback. Uh, I am not putting my name on this. There is no way that if I'm giving you negative feedback and I'm signed in with my Gmail account that you can get my name and my email and my negative feedback. That's just not gonna happen because you can see the email, you can see the email that's set up with my Uber account and that's a quick deactivation for me. You know, maybe they won't do that, but at least that is something that I'm worried about because these companies can do really whatever they want. Like we're not employees, we're independent contractors. So they can really deactivate us for any reason. So I'm going to avoid that. And I'm gonna advise you to avoid that. Actually, when I went in to the app, I had this exact same message and I was able to click on give my feedback there and it did not automatically log me in from my Gmail account. And so I'm like, okay, I think this means that they cannot trace this back to me. I am going to leave the name field blank. I'm going to leave the email field blank. 
but I am going to give my feedback. I think I said, this is the worst update I have ever seen. I cannot believe you're doing this to me. This is a safety hazard. This is like going to hurt my earnings. I have a 100% customer satisfaction rate. And so I think I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Like you don't need to make these changes so that customers can benefit from whatever you're trying to accomplish. Like no one has given me a negative rating. I think I'm doing a pretty good job. So let's just keep things the way that they are. Your feedback matters. I think that everyone should do this, give their negative feedback if this has happened to you. I think if we get enough people to write a negative review of this change, then they might want to do something about it. I wanted to make sure that I give you advice on how to move forward with this situation. The first thing I said was giving your feedback through that email or through the app, as long as you're not logged in with your email. And then the next thing that I think is the most important is to multi-app. With Uber, in the past couple of days, I have seen that my earnings have decreased on there because I just do not want to accept their offers, especially when I can't see the restaurant and I can't see where I'm delivering it. And so I've been relying more on Grubhub and thankfully that has been working out in my favor. And so with Point Pickup, just make sure you have as many options as you can in front of you. And so you don't have to rely on just one app for your earnings. If I was only relying on Uber Eats for my earnings and then I got this message, oh, I would be so upset and I am upset right now but I am so thankful that I have the other apps that I can use as well as Uber when I finally see a good offer on that platform. Another thing that has been so helpful for me these past couple of days when I've had to deal with this is to really learn your market very well from the map because they will show you the location of that restaurant, but if you don't know what that restaurant is, then you're going to have trouble. But for me, because I know the area so well, just by looking at a map, I know that they're giving me a general location and I almost instantly know which restaurant they're talking about, even though it just says like basically nothing. I'm able to see, oh, like that's Wildflower. I love going to Wildflower. So yeah, I'll accept that. Or I can see, oh, that one's going to Wendy's. That is terrible. I'm not going to Wendy's. There's always 10 cars in that drive through line and their lobby's not open. Same with Taco Bell. It shows Taco Bell and I'm like, no, get out of here. That's gross. And so like for me, that has been so helpful. And as long as they're not going to show me where I'm supposed to drop it off, I might as well be able to gather as much information as possible about what restaurant I'm going to so I can accept it or decline. Another thing just make sure that you are only accepting orders that make sense for you. You will only be able to look at the total payout, the estimated time, and the mileage. And that's not very much information, but if it says $6 for six miles, you are going to have to decline that. Like, But if the offer makes sense, say it says $8 and three miles, and the time estimate is like, 15 minutes, well, then I'd say that's probably an accept. And of course, you don't know where you're going. So please watch out for your safety when doing that. Make sure that there's almost no chance that you're going to have to deliver to that sketchy area in your city. But like I said, there's also other things like using multiple apps just to make sure that you are making the money that you are going out there to earn. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. And if you've been enjoying the rest of my videos, please subscribe and I'll see you next time.